Typhoon Koinu, a major rain and wind threat for Taiwan. So a building typhoon now active in the Western Pacific, the Philippine Sea, Koinu, a category one at this point, and is likely to intensify much further over the next few days as it approaches Taiwan and the northernmost islands of the Philippines. 18.2 north, 128.6 degrees east. And this is the current information as of 6 p.m. Uh, Taipei time, 7 p.m. JST this October 1st. Category 1 with winds of 75 miles per hour sustained and an estimated pressure of 985 millibars. And right now it's moving northwest at 8 miles per hour or 13 kilometers per hour. Here's the position displayed on the map then right now and its wind field which is slowly stretching outwards towards the south particularly but I think the north side will catch up soon um, and that is where we are at right now the weakest side the northwest at the moment 679 kilometers from Santa Ana in the Philippines 733 from Basco 763 from Itbayat 812 from Miyakojima in Japan and 992 from Kaohsiung City in southern Taiwan so it's slowly getting closer at 8 miles per hour right now no watches and warnings in effect at this time it will be a few days before it really arrives in any of those locations and there is some uncertainty about its track forecast so the main threat we're worried about right now is flash flooding because it's expected to dump large amounts of rainfall over the northernmost Philippine Islands and Taiwan regardless of its track. The current track forecast calls for the storm stalling near Taiwan resulting in torrential rainfall in the eastern mountains in excess of 1000 millimeters right now is on the GFS forecast at least. Uh, if the storm does keep moving though or goes to different places then that might reduce the chances but we are expecting large amounts of rainfall nonetheless. So here's what we're expecting over the next few days as far as the wind field is concerned. Really uh, growing on the northern sides there by the time it gets close to Taiwan. It literally just stops there in the middle of the week and then it moves very slowly onwards and very low confidence in what happens after that, whether it recurves hooks towards the northeast there along the coast of Taiwan or whether it continues westwards into the South China Sea. Right now though, 75 mile per hour winds, good confidence, supported by JTWC and AMSU, JMA a little bit lower at 70 miles per hour, and ADT estimates are much higher, near 90 miles per hour right now, which is interesting, but gas are lagging behind a little bit at 100 kilometers per hour on their latest update. But decent agreement there for 75 miles per hour or low end category 1 but it will strengthen there's the JTWC forecast map calling for a very strong landfall there probably category 3 high end uh, in southern Taiwan before weakening as it moves through into the South China Sea uh, they're not showing real clear signs of it turning northwards there so that's something else to look at this is the GFS model then forecasting that strengthening to category 3 status moving on towards the west there uh, and then you can see just how it slows down it does mean it weakens so the strongest winds of the storm won't really be felt on land it will weaken before it gets there of course if that isn't what happens if it keeps going at a pace then obviously Taiwan will get much stronger winds but as it is right now it looks like on that forecast model at least that it's probably going to be category one conditions in the southern part of Taiwan with very strong winds all around the island and of course the rainfall factor will be right there too well here is the uh, simulated radar reflectivity showing the southern side having the most torrential rain in those earlier stages and perhaps in the later stages too wraps around a little bit better to the north side later on there and of course it shrinks in size as well also enhances the monsoon in the Philippines too, the western coast of Luzon as we continue to watch that loop but it also shows you the general motion there are going to be west northwestwards or maybe some areas at uh, some parts of time with northwestwards then turning more decidedly west as it makes its final approach to Taiwan and then it's not really sure what to do next there and some of its influence gets dragged up towards the northeast. 
So rainfall expectations during the forecast there in the next seven days, we are calling for very high amounts of rain for the coast of Taiwan. And this is potentially a worst case scenario what the GFS is throwing out here. And it is calling along the coast there getting close to 50 inches of rain, uh, which is uh, 1250 millimeters which is an extraordinary amount for some of the philippine islands it's approaching 500 millimeters and for the western coast of luzon for large parts there in the coastal regions getting up towards 250 millimeters there as well but extremely high rainfall amounts in taiwan possibly even 1000 millimeters in um, taipei or should i say 500 sorry not a thousand Looking at sea surface temperatures, they're very warm ahead of the storm, still looking okay, 29 degrees Celsius, pushing close to 30 at times, but it will generally be around 29 by the time it reaches Taiwan. If it does end up uh, threading the gap between Taiwan and China, it's a little bit cooler over there, around 27 degrees Celsius, but if it moves on into the South China Sea, it will remain warm, pushing close to 29, 30 degrees again. But in short, that will not be an issue. Let's look at some satellite imagery then. You can see this imagery that we opened up with uh, and you can see some hot towers blowing up, uh, particularly that one on the southwestern side, a sign of intensification. One's on the right and northern side there, not looking quite as good, maybe a little bit more influence from dry air or wind shear, but the southwestern side looks clearly to be the strongest at this point. You can look at all of this imagery uh, in real time on the Force 13 website, force13.com slash satellite. And it's looking okay on the infrared channels as well, clearly showing that those coldest cloud tops are on that southern side. The eye not fully apparent yet, there were little glimpses of it earlier, but certainly that mid and high level appearance of the storm is looking good. Uh, we're just waiting to filter down into the lower levels. Probably a weakness or a gap in the northern eye wall, it's probably not a complete one yet. Uh, but certainly this storm will be on its way to attaining major typhoon intensity that's on the forecast over the next few days.